So to start this video out, I wanted to read a paragraph from this incredible article that Richard Lewis wrote um, about Etika passing away. I'll link this down in the description. But I think this paragraph really puts into perspective what we're gonna be talking about in this video. And let's just put it on the record what no one else seems willing to say. You know what the mob wants when they come to constantly apply the pressure to tell you that society will never forgive you for the things you did and said. Social media is a device where total strangers can make sure you're never allowed to forget and move on from your mistakes. Instead, you must constantly answer to faceless, nameless strangers who hold you to a moral standard from the safety of anonymity. Then comes the exaggerations and the lies. They tell your employers, they go after your partners and kids. Your mistakes tarnish anyone and everyone who stands with you. They want you to crack. That's why they never stop. They want you to crack and maybe kill yourself. That is why they quote unquote vote you off. It's just another game, a way to pass the time. Pile on and see if the words we can type can erase things we don't like from existence, even people if we try hard enough. They can feel that way because social media has reduced us down to distillations of ourselves, avatars on the world wide web that don't have a person behind them, words on a screen, no consequences. Oh, did they die? Did they do it? Well, they weren't real anyway. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, what I try to do is take a look at what's going on in the YouTube community and try to see what lessons we can pull from them to see how we can improve our own mental and emotional well-being. Because something that I'm extremely passionate about is mental health. So if you're into any of that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And while you're at it, make sure you follow me on social media at The Rewired Soul over on Instagram and Twitter. So yeah, I wanted to make this video. I was thinking about doing like an examining cancel culture series. If this is something like, if you end up liking this video, let me know down in the comments below. Maybe I'll do more of these. But with this Slazo situation, I'm just kind of looking at some of the stories that have just happened this year. In 2019, I'm like, this is absolutely insane. And I wanna be talking about cancel culture, mob mentality. I wanna talk about what we can do as creators, what you guys can do as the audience, but this is stuff that plays a role in all of our lives. Like it's the internet age and we're more connected than ever before, which is like an amazing thing and a terrible thing, right? Like back in the day, like if I'm sitting here in Las Vegas and you think I'm a dick and you're sitting like in another part of the country, I would never know that. But now I can see that, right? Same thing with all of you. Like, you guys all have Twitter or Instagram accounts. Some stranger that you don't even know can just talk this smack to you. But anyways, let's talk about James Charles, Pro Jared, and Slazo, okay? Each one a little bit different, but stay with me here. And as I go through each story real quick, I will explain a few of the nuances going on and everything like that. So obviously the biggest story that blew up this year was James Charles. And James Charles and Pro Jared happened around the same time, but the James Charles situation was much, much, much bigger. Obviously, you know, it started off with Tati Westbrook. It was a little bit of a, you know, she felt hurt and betrayed that James Charles promoted a competitor's product. But something that she touched on in her video was James Charles' predatory behavior, all right? Jeffree Star started saying some things about that as well. And what happened? James Charles started losing millions of subscribers, okay? When James Charles finally came out with his side of the story and showed the receipts, we saw that the primary accusation, all right, the primary one was that he was a predator trying to turn straight boys gay, right? But when you look at the two major instances, the waiter Sam and then Gage, both of those were consensual, just messy things that happened, all right? And it was all made public. And once James Charles came forward with that, everybody's like, oh, and the mob went from over here to over there. James Charles starts gaining subscribers back and all of that once he came out with his side of the story. But I want you to think about the serious allegation, like a common theme throughout all of these is like, 
we need to stop looking at everything so black and white. I was just talking with my beautiful girlfriend, Tristan, like, like when we look at regular laws, right? Like, for example, you have first degree murder, you have second degree murder, you have manslaughter. Each one is a different severity, right? But that's the court of law. When it comes to the court of public opinion, we tend to look at everything as black and white, right? Like people are either all good and all bad. And for some reason, logic just completely escapes us because on a, from a logical standpoint, we all know that's not how it works, right? Good people can do bad things. Hell, even bad people might do some good things, right? But when, a, when we look at James Charles, like was James Charles an egotistical, money hungry, bad friend? Probably, right? But that doesn't also mean that he's a predator, okay? So then we have the pro-Jared situation. Now, let me make this very clear, like crystal clear, okay? I'm going to be talking about the accusations that Jared was cheating on his wife, Heidi. Now, something that there hasn't been enough information about yet is the allegations that pro Jared was sending nudes to minors, okay? That is a tricky situation and I believe his lawyers told him to just not make a statement about that publicly. They're trying to handle it, you know, in the courts, like where it should be handled, right? But, and you can correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments below, but I do believe that the, the people who accused him have since like deleted their Twitter accounts. And if you remember during the James Charles situation, like this is where it gets tricky, like some people were making fake stories up about him. But anyways, the pro Jared situation all started with Heidi saying that pro Jared cheated on her and he was uh, emotionally abusive and all these other things. But when Holly came out with her story, what we found out was it was a messy polyamorous relationship, right? Now, was, Pro Jared, a bad husband? Possibly, but a messy polyamorous relationship doesn't necessarily mean like he is this, this awful, terrible person, especially once the messages were shown from Heidi's side, right? Showing that she was talking about how she wanted to ruin him and ruin his career and all these things, not even his career, but she wanted to ruin his show that would have affected many other people, right? So now we have the Slazo situation. And if you guys missed it, I just made a video updating the story on that. And like, I've done this with each of these three stories this year. When more information comes out, I've had to update them. Like, so those of you who haven't followed the Slazo story, he was accused of sexual assault. Like this is what he was accused of. And he just came out with a video with his side showing receipts and everything like that. Now. Like, was Slazo a, a bad young boyfriend? Probably, but like I mentioned in my video yesterday, there's only one, there's only one DM, there's only one receipt, if you will, that is still a little suspect, right? But what we found once Slazo showed his side, that again, this looked like some sort of messy relationship, and once we found out the other side, we realized it wasn't what we thought it was, right? But, He's another example of somebody who started losing thousands and thousands and thousands of subscribers. People wanted this guy's life ruined. Then he comes out with his side and people are like, oh, right? And one of the main reasons I wanted to make this video because this is something that really, really, really bothers me is that there are such strong allegations against these people, not even allegations, there's also accusations against these people. And I don't know if it's pride, I don't know if it's ego, I don't know if it's ignorance, but a lot of people don't wanna correct themselves when they're wrong. So what I did yesterday was when Slazo came out with his video, I wanted to see if the original people who reported on this story 
trying to correct themselves, right? And many of them did not. So this morning, I gave it some more time, this morning I went through, and I'm not gonna name any names or anything like that, like you can go do your own research. But anyways, this morning I checked again, like okay, let's give it some more time, because I know some of the people who commented on the situation um, are from you know England and things like that, so the time difference, so they might post when I'm asleep and things, but whatever. But I looked again this morning, and some of the people who made videos that blew up, um, didn't correct themselves, right? And this is something that's bothered me, like, especially since the James Charles situation. Like, there were people calling James Charles a liar, right, from his first apology video and everything like that, but then when he came with receipts and we found out he wasn't lying about quite a few things, people didn't correct themselves. And this doesn't make me any better, right? But it's like, we have this duty, even as people, not just the creators, but as people, to follow these stories and find out the new information because we are like putting like these serious labels on people. But anyways, this morning while I was checking for Slazo updates, I came across a creator who didn't make a video. What he did was he retweeted a video from another creator and said like, here are my thoughts, right? And I'm like, that doesn't seem right. You know what I mean? Like that doesn't seem right at all. But the part that was kind of interesting and kind of didn't sit with me well either was the serious things that people were saying about Slazo and this video that was retweeted, it was still saying like, Slazo's still a, a pretty bad guy. And I look at it and I'm just like, this isn't as black and white as people, people think. And here's the thing, the internet like um, like what I, I read from the intro, right? The internet has created this way for anonymity to give anybody a moral high ground. Just anybody out there, you are this faceless, nameless thing, and you could just call anybody who you want to terrible. And like, that's one of the reasons I make my videos, because I know this. I know this for a fact, like, we all love sitting back and just judging everybody, right? We just love judging everybody. And it's because it's so much easier to not look at ourselves. Like, why would I even take one second to look at myself or look at my past or look at what I've had to improve when I can sit here and judge people that I don't even know? And I can say things about them on Twitter and I can say things in the comment section. And regardless, of the fact that these are human beings and everything that comes out adds on to the labels being thrown on these people. Like, thank God James Charles came out of the situation, but my personal opinion on this situation is the only reason James Charles came out of this in a positive way was because he is such a massive creator. Like, pro Jared, haven't heard any updates about him. He's still dealing with legal stuff. But Slazo, like, this is a kid. Like, this dude is a kid, right? And, like, did he have a messy teenage relationship? Yes. But I think we all learned from his response video that he is not the monster that a lot of people originally thought he was, right? And I really just hope people can take that into consideration. And I, I have no false delusions that I'm gonna like end cancel culture, but like I, I really want to examine these things, especially after the fact, and really get us thinking, because here's the thing. Wisdom is taking your knowledge and putting it to practical use. Like, it blows my mind how we've seen this happen multiple times this year, right? This huge, crazy, angry mob freaking out ruining people, then all of a sudden new information comes out and everybody's like, oh, right? So take this knowledge, take what's happened, and the next time this happens, like, remember this. But here's the worst part. It's because, like, I'm a huge believer in the whole, like, you know, believe victims. Like, I've worked with many, many people, both women and men, who are victims of, like, PTSD from assault, right? But it seems like this whole culture, this cancel culture, is making it even harder to believe people. And I'm not, I'm not quite sure what the original motives or intentions are. I, I try to hope the best for people and I don't, I don't want to believe they did it with these like terrible intentions. But we as a society need to kind of like 
slow our roll just a little bit and hold off on such strong judgments, right? Because in the court of law, it is innocent until proven guilty. But when it comes to the court of opinion, for some reason, it's guilty until proven innocent. And I just want you to sit back and reflect on that for a second. Like imagine it was you in that situation. How would you feel being labeled guilty until proven innocent? All right, but anyways, just some stuff I want everybody to think about. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. If you want me to do more videos like this, examining cancel culture and kind of reflecting on situations like this that have happened, let me know down in the comments below. But anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You're all amazing. And if you would like to become a patron, support what I'm doing here, get access to some other perks and benefits, click or tap right there. All right. Thanks again so, so much for watching. I'll see you next time.